Uh, welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well and in today's video I want to take a look at my Mega SMRT1 with regards to its current response performance. Uh, this is a precursor to testing inrush and uh, peak measurement on these current clamps, these little fellows here that's been asked about on numerous occasions. Um, what I intend to do is with my oscilloscope here set up in single sequence mode, so a single trigger point, and just measure a little program I've generated on my test set that I will show you now. So this is the program that controls the SMRT1. I am in a sequence test mode here, and you can see I've got four states overall and state one here is just a pre-fault mode, a delay of one second and then I move on to state two which is a 100 millisecond signal and it's going to put out six amps at 50 hertz for that duration there. I then go on to state three which is just a second at zero output and then our state four is just to end the test sequence there. So that's my little test plan that I will run. And our scope is set up ready to trigger. So all I need to do is hit the run test button. And there we have our signal come out. So let's just zoom into our scope. And I will capture these and put uh, the pictures up as well so you can see them better because I know there's a big reflection uh, on this but if we put some cursors up oh, we do have a uh, ah, peak to peak not RMS amplitude is 200 millivolts so the way I'm picking this signal up is through a 1 ohm resistor uh, so you can look at those there uh, the cursor measurement is 9.5 volt. Sorry, no, so a cursor measurement is 18.9 volts peak to peak, which kind of matches up with that there, doesn't it? Uh, what I want to do is put those ones on and just measure. Ooh, ooh, not the whole signal. Didn't want to do that. So obviously, this one we're hoping is going to be somewhere around about 100 milliseconds. And we've got 100.2 there on the scope. So that one is all good. Let's just save him. And we'll knock our cursors off. And we'll go for another run. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to put the current up to 20 amps. And we've probably put there, haven't we? So let's just... Uh, 5 volts, oh, that one. 10 volts, clear you. Let's just run him again. Ooh, okay. So we'll stick our cursors back. So we're now 39 volts peak to peak and where are we with our? That is looking pretty good. Yeah, that one all looks good. I'm not sure why the uh, it's clipping there. That's obviously the performance of the SMRT. Um, so we'll just need to uh, be wary of that. So that may well affect results. Okay, so what we've just done now is set this to a DC test current. And um, we'll just run the same set of tests and see how it performs this time. Okay, so there's a fair bit of noise on this one, isn't there? So we're now in DC. Uh, don't want to do that. Uh, go back down again. Just going to run him again because he's gone question mark over there. Uh, getting a mess. Okay, so there's a fair bit of noise uh, on this one. Let's just go down to him there. 8.92 volts peak. 
got an amplitude of 5.52, uh, which that matches. Uh, got seven volts, so I should be looking at straight six volts on this really, shouldn't I? So, as in the amplitude is averaging out, isn't it? Yeah. So it is a wee bit noisy. Let's put our time cursors on, and they look pretty good. Uh, so again, we are 100 milliseconds, so that one's all good. Save him. Uh, we need to go to volts. Let's turn you two off again. And we'll just turn him up to 20 amps DC. And we can run him. And then we see quite a bit of difference in performance there, isn't there? Uh, we've got, yeah, we're pretty good on our time. So, uh, another waveform. So we are looking at 19.7 volts. Uh, up to peak there, but we do have a drop off down at the bottom here, which I guess is why it said the uh, peak to peak is 26.3 volts down there because of this point that's down here. It's picking up that peak down there as it turns off over there, which mm, will the current clamp respond to that? Don't know. I wouldn't have thought so. Okay, so that's with the test there. Um, that was with just being connected up to this uh, single coil that I have here. So we'll do some testing with that. What I just want to do now is repeat this, but with my coil adapter in there. Okay, so exactly the same setup. Just pan out. You see I've got my current table in here now. So now we've got an inductance coil. Um, we just want to see if we get the same performance with regard to uh, the way this measures, we are going to be uh, um, so we reset him. So uh, we're going to go backwards with the test, aren't we? Because we're on 20 amps DC now. Uh, so let's hit that there. So pretty similar response there. Uh, take my two up, so over there, 18.5 volts, again 100 milliseconds, no problem there, let's just save him, go back, and then we need to turn this back down to 6 amps now, and we'll run the test again, probably should have put him up, shouldn't we? So again, we've got a similar bit of uh, messing around, haven't we, with the waveform. 100 milliseconds is no problem, but we've got a bit of noise creeping in there with the way this operates. 6.68 uh, volts there. And if we go down onto the... So 6 volts is about there. Yeah, okay. Let's just save him. And now we need to convert everything to AC. That's AC, we'll reset. Go again. Uh, we need to up our voltages, don't we? So we are going on 20 amps on this one. So pretty similar response with the uh, Previous one on DC there and the previous AC one. Millisecond. Uh, yeah, we're hundred point six by the looks of it. And um, peak to peak, I'll have to calculate the uh, RMS of these. One time peak to peak was thirty six point four volts. Yeah, thirty six point six on the screen there. That's what we've uh, matches. Okay. So our final one is our 6 amps, um, probably go up there. So yeah, it's a pretty nice response on AC, isn't it? It seems to be much cleaner than when we're on uh, DC. Um, 
So again, oh, we're about 100 milliseconds there because we have to budge him a fraction. And move a fraction. And then I'll peak to peak there. Seems pretty good. Seventeen point eight volts, get seventeen point six there, let me measure it up. Okay, so that's got all those saved. Uh, I will now be able to sit down at the computer and get them all correlated. Okay, so we'll show you this results table here from the measurements made. On the left hand side I've got each of the measurements for six amps at and twenty amps, AC and DC, one set R for single turn coil and the other set are for the 50 turn coil. Down at the bottom there you've got the actual resistance measurement for the sense resistor I use so it's slightly over one ohm. I made that measurement with the 2450 SMU so that should be good and accurate. And then moving across to the right hand side of the table you can see I've calculated the equivalent RMS current based upon the voltage measurements taken and that sense resistor and you can see we don't have a particularly good set of results. Um, DC readings are somewhat better than the AC readings. Both the 20 amp AC readings, we are minus 31% for the single turn and minus 36% for the 50 turn deviation from the 20 amps, which is not good at all. And as we did the test, we also saw significant clipping of the peak of the waveforms. And it's that clipping that's the major deviation from the expected reading. Now I did say at the time I thought it was something to do with the capability of the SMRT1. It is, but unfortunately it's more of a problem that I've created with the use of this 1 ohm sense resistor here. Um, these injection test sets, they do have a voltage burden for the current outputs that they are capable of driving. And with a 1 ohm resistor, uh, 6 amps, I will need 6 volts across it. For 20 amps I will need 20 volts across it and unfortunately our skits cannot deliver that voltage burden. Put this little plot up here, uh, to the right hand side of the plot you can see the graph from Mega which is its voltage burden graph or its capability. I've converted that to show me what the capability would be for the different current that I am injecting and you can see at 20 amps the SMRT1 can only be delivering 11.5 volts but 11.5 volts doesn't cut it for this 1 ohm resistor, so that's our problem, that's why we were getting the clipping test engineer error, I'm afraid. So, push that one to one side, and we've now got this slightly enlarged resistor, but this is 0.1 ohm resistance value. So now my burden has significantly decreased on the test set, and can now get another set of readings, so we'll just demo the 20 amp AC, uh, we're on to the 50 turn coil at the back here that you perhaps can't see. Uh, slightly out of picture, we'll zoom into the scope so you can have a look. We have also to, we saw some interference when we were doing the signals last, so this Mixig um, has a 30 kilohertz low pass filter, that's the lowest it can go. So I've enabled that to try and clean the waveforms up a little bit, but it's probably not the best scope for the job. I probably should have used something else uh, to do it. But we'll run the 20 amp AC 50 hertz. And you can see that's the readings that we've got now. And peak to peak is now 6 volts. So uh, let's uh, put our cursors on. And move these about so we can get some of the readings. Cursors are really annoying the way they end up in the middle of the display as well. Let's take you up there. Uh, so we've got uh, 6.08 volts, 100.2 milliseconds. So if we do the calculation at 6 volts, with a 0.1 ohm sense resistor that gives us a pretty good reading for the current being displayed. I'll just save him as well. I've been through all the test points again running them in this manner with this 0.1 ohm resistor and the filter applied 
and I show you these in this table and you can see that we now have a much better set of results for our single turn we're down to two and a half percent deviation across any of the four readings which is perfectly acceptable for 50 turn we've got a bit more deviation in there up to eight percent um, but I think that's probably okay for what our intention is for this testing so that's a much better set of results also taking into consideration that this scope has a two percent tolerance on the measurements on the voltage scale so that adds to the equation a little bit as well I think it will be okay to use this test set to test the performance of these current clumps with regards to their inrush measurement capability um, it's just a good set of tests for me to do to get that confidence um, but those measurements on those current clumps I'll put into another video as this one's gone on for long enough now um, hope you found this interesting thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next video